Hello class, praise the Lord, and uh, I hope you all are doing well. And this is uh, this is our first class on the book of Hebrews. So today we are going to begin with the course, with your course on the book of Hebrews. And I hope that this uh, this whole course, this journey together that we do or walk or tread uh, will be a joyful one. And we all will learn together what uh, God has tried to tell us or what the author has tried to state or say in this book of Hebrews. And we are going to learn a lot about, um, about this book and uh, may it be helpful and useful for our faith, for uh, its application in our lives and a good living, uh, a good Christian living as well. So let's begin with our class on the book of Hebrews. So today we are just going to, in this lecture, basically we are going to uh, just dive into the background and we'll do an analytical study of the book of Hebrews all over. So that it's a kind of a summarized study that we're going to do today so that you can get a glimpse or the idea of uh, what is there in this book particularly. And then we are going to do chapter wise or verse wise study that also uh, uh, from the next lecture onwards, we're going to get into the book. So today or in this lecture, we are going to just begin and take a just overview of the background and uh, look at the analytical study or analyze the book of Hebrews. So let's begin. Let us uh, start uh, seeing what God, uh, what the book tells us. And in a summarized way, let me start sharing the screen so that you all can follow it. Okay, so this is the first chapter and it is called Background and Analysis of the book. And this is, um, this is the first chapter that we are going to do. And the chapter's name is Overview of Hebrews. Okay, so in the introduction, we can see uh, about, look at, let's look at the first verse first. Okay, so if you have the Bible with you, uh, let's open the Bible to the book of Hebrews and we'll just read the chapter one, verse one. Long ago, at many times, and in many ways, God spoke to our fathers by the prophets. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by his son, whom he appointed the heir of all things, through whom also he created the world. He is the radiance of the glory of God and the exact imprint of his nature, and he upholds the universe by the word of his power. After making purification for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty of on high, having become as much superior to the angels as um, having become as much superior to the angels as the name he has inherited is more excellent than theirs. Okay, so we just read from chapter one, verses one to four, one through four. And this is how the book of Hebrews begins. Okay. So definitely you would have seen. There is a difference between uh, the first chapter, the first few verses of the letter of Hebrews. And if you go to see and the other books, other, other epistles, it, the, there is a different kind of beginning uh, in the different and the other epistles in comparison to what we find in the book of Hebrews. Okay, but the author, as we can see over here, the epistle begins over here with the basic truth. The basic truth is that God has spoken. Okay, the basic truth is that God has spoken. Okay, so I have just read uh, from uh, ESV. So you might be having different versions of the Bible. So it might be a little different in its version while you read it. But uh, the main thing that we see over here is uh, that the big, the epistle begins with uh, not like uh, Paul says or Peter says or James says or anybody else is saying, but he simply wants to tell us that God has spoken. So if fallen man has to find his way back to God, only God can reveal the way. Because we do not, as fallen people, we know that when we sinned, we did not know how to go back to God. We do not know how to turn, I mean, turn around and just uh, go back to God and you know run back into Him. Uh, but it is only God. It is only God who can find our ways, ways back, and who can reveal how we can come back to Him. And He has taken that initiative by revealing the way how we can come back to him. So the epistle tells us that God used various ways in revealing himself to the fathers through the prophets. Okay, well, chapter one, verse one, we just not read. And uh, it simply tells that God throughout the history, throughout the ages from the time that human being had fallen, uh, God has been taking steps 
Okay, God has been uh, doing various things. God has been speaking, speaking, speaking through various ways. So he has been revealing himself through various ways to our ancestors, to our fathers, through the prophets. And now he has given us a fuller revelation of himself, a more complete revelation of himself through his son, Jesus Christ. Okay, so it's not that God has ever been quiet. God has always been speaking from the beginning and revealing himself, revealing the way, revealing himself, revealing about the father to our forefathers, to prophets, to different, different ways. And uh, there was a fuller revelation of God that we have received through his son, Jesus Christ. So the Old Testament points towards the Lord Jesus Christ and we see in him the final, okay, and the final and the fuller revelation of God himself. He is the radiance of God's glory and the exact representation of his being. This is chapter 1, verse 3. So we can see that the Old Testament was only pointing towards Jesus Christ. So every signs, every symbols, every sacrifices, every feast and festival, everything, all the prophecies, everything was pointing towards Jesus Christ. And when Jesus Christ came, we see that he was the exact representation of God. He is the final revelation of God himself. And chapter 1 verse 3 goes on to say that he is the radiance of God's glory. Okay, He's the radiance of God's glory and the exact representation of his being. The epistle emphasizes on the superiority of Jesus Christ. The revelation of God and through whom God had spoken. Okay, so we have to understand that this epistle's emphasis, where is the epistle's emphasis? The epistle's, epistle's emphasis is on the superiority of Jesus Christ, the revelation, who is the revelation of God, and through whom God has spoken. He who was the creator of the world became a suffering savior, and now is seated at the right hand of the Father, Hence, his message commands respect and grateful acceptance. So we have to understand that if we, um, if we re revered or if we accepted the messages or, uh, or whatever the prophets have spoken, if we accepted what Moses has spoken, if we accepted what Abraham has spoken, if we accepted what all the prophets have been speaking, then how much more we should accept Jesus Christ, his words. Because he who was the creed creator, okay, he was the creator of the whole world. And then he became lower than the angels. He became a human being. He became a man. Okay, and he lived among us and he suffered for us on the cross and, and the last days of his life, throughout his life, basically. And he became a suffering servant. And now, where is he after his death and resurrection? He is seated at the right hand of the Father Almighty. He is seated in his rightful position. He is seated at the right hand of authority of the Father. Hence, his message demands respect. His message commands grateful acceptance. So we should accept and respect his message. Let's look at the structure of the book, the structural unity of the book. So Hebrews, uh, we'll look into, uh, we'll actually compare and see, uh, or we will see how the book of Hebrew connects with the whole of the Bible. So let's look first into Hebrews and the Old Testament. Okay, how is Hebrews connected with the Old Testament? Hebrews cannot be studied without being acquainted with Old Testament. It is full of Old Testament elements, persons, institutions, events, and quotations from the Old Testament, which form the basis of its teaching. So you can see, if you see that the book of Hebrews, if you have read the book of Hebrews, we will understand that there is so much, it is full actually of the Old Testament elements. The whole book, more than it talks about the New Testament, it talks a lot of things about the Old Testament and how it is fulfilled in Jesus Christ. Okay, so anybody who does not have any idea of Old Testament, any idea of, you know, things that happened in the Old Testament, the rituals, the events, the feast festivals, the sacrifices, uh, he will find it a little difficult to understand the book of Hebrew. So you need to have a little bit of uh, idea or knowledge of what Old Testament is about and what is Old Testament and what it says and what is found in the Old Testament, then it will be much easier for that person to understand the book of Hebrews. Uh, so the book of Hebrews, how is it connected with uh, the Old Testament? The Old Testament has some basic things. It has words and teachings. Okay, there are teachings and words found in the Old Testament. There are persons and events in the Old Testament. There are religious systems in the Old Testament. And there are messianic prophecies also found in the Old Testament. 
So what does the book of Hebrew has? So let's look at the building block that uh, the Hebrew is built upon. So the, uh, the Hebrew book of Hebrew uses the words and teachings of the Old Testament as a basis for its doctrines. Okay, it uses the words and the teachings of Old Testament as the basis for its doctrines. It uses Old Testament persons and events to illustrate its doctrines. It explains Old Testament types of Christ in the religious system. It also shows the fulfillment of Old Testament prophecies in Jesus Christ. So this is how it is connected with the Old Testament. And it is how it is built upon the foundations laid by the Old Testament. So the epistle contains quotations from the Pentateuch, the historical books, the poetic, poetical books, and the prophetic books. So we have to understand it contains quotations from all the sections, okay, from all the sections. Uh, just leaving aside the political, sorry, the political books are also there. So we have to understand that uh, it contains all, okay, it talks, it, it, uh, it basically uh, includes quotations or contains quotations from all the different books which the Hebrews accepted or the Jews accepted in their times. So it contains quotations from the Pentateuch, the first five books, then the historical books, then the poetical books, and also the prophetical books. The author uses a broad base of history and religion of the Hebrews in the entire Old Testament as a foundation for his message to them. Okay, so we can understand that he has taken or made use of the history and the religion of the Jewish, of the Jews or the Hebrew people, and he has used it to lay the foundation of his message in the book of Hebrews. So the author has quoted from the Septuagint version. This is a very important thing you have to understand. He is not quoted from the Hebrew version of the Bible or the Old Testament, but the author uh, has quoted from the Septuagint version. What is the Septuagint version? The Septuagint version is the Greek translation of the Old Testament, which was done in 258 to 246 BC. So he has not taken directly from the Hebrew language of the Old Testament, but he has taken from the Septuagint version, which is the Greek translation. Okay, so the, 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 that is why you can see that if there are quotations from the Old Testament, and if you compare it with the Bible that you have, uh, the Old Testament that you have, uh, so you will realize that there are difference in the words or difference, some kind of differences, but the meaning will be the same. Okay, so the quotes, uh, he quotes much of the Messianic Psalms and shows how the prophecies of the promised Messiah are fulfilled in Jesus Christ. Okay, so what the author has done, he has taken many of the Messianic Psalms and he shows how these prophecies of about the promised Messiah are fulfilled in the in the life of Jesus Christ or in Jesus Christ. Okay, he even uses many examples from the Old Testament history. So he shows how the persons, events, and religious institutions are actually types of Jesus Christ. Okay, Yeshu Masih ke prakar hai purane niyam mein. Okay, so this is a chart before you, uh, and I would request you to just take a screenshot if you can, and uh, you know just read it. Okay, so this is basically, if you can understand, it is upon about it is about Hebrews one, and uh, it talks about the persons, the text from where the text has been quoted in the book of Hebrews, and then the persons. Okay, so you can see over here, this is the text of the Hebrews where, where you can find, and these are the texts from the Old Testament, okay, where from where the author has taken, and then we can see the references about the people whom uh, the, 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 the writer of Hebrew is talking about, okay, like God, he's talking about God, the forefathers, the prophets, God, the son, son, majesty in heaven, angels, angels, son of God, okay, so all these things, these are the persons whom he is talking about in his book or uh, in these verses. And then this is, he's talking about religious systems also. So the prophetic ministry, the purification, God ruling. So all these things, we can see the religious system. Okay, the religious system which the Hebrews used to follow. Uh, he's talking about all those things in these verses over here. And then the events and the prophecies. Okay, uh, so we can see uh, all these things also over here. So if you can just read uh, through this, uh, through this, uh, chart, you will have a, a slight idea of how uh, in so many places the author has chosen to quote or to take uh, the examples of people, illustrations of people, illustration of religious system, and illustration of prophecies and the events that took place 
okay uh, and how they were fulfilled in the new testament and how uh, all this has been uh, together made note and taken and written by the author of hebrews to prove his point that he wants to prove some knowledge of the levitical system of priesthood and offering helps us to better understand and appreciate the book of hebrews okay so we definitely need to have a, a, a kind of foundational or basic understanding of the religious system of uh, the hebrews that is the levitical system of priesthood the offering the sacrifices and if we know all these things little bit at least so we will be able to understand and uh, uh, understand more clearly the book of hebrews so under the old covenant the israelites had to offer different kinds of sacrifices god had ordained these as a picture of the many aspects of what jesus christ has done for us so we can see that the sacrifices that the in the old testament that uh, the israelites committed or did uh, in the as a part of the old covenant was actually a picture of what jesus christ would be achieving in the new testament or when he is when he comes down okay so they were all prophetic types to be fulfilled in the lamb of god who takes away the sin of the world the typology of the levitical ritual is beautifully unfolded in the book of hebrews now let's look at some of the fulfillments of christ uh, of the religion in the religion of the, the in christ of the religious system so how the religious system was fulfilled in christ okay so let's look at that so here if you can see at the left hand side of the table old testament types and then we have the new testament fulfillment and here the reference that we find in the book of hebrews okay so first the house the israel israel the house of god okay so this is a, uh, this is a type that is found in the old testament the israel as the house of god uh, how was it fulfilled in the new testament uh, so all believers in the house of god are israel okay so this is the house of god it is mentioned in chapter 3 of hebrews then we can see the sabbath day of rest Uh, in the old testament and in the new testament how was it fulfilled the spiritual rest for god's people uh, in chapter 4 of hebrews then we can see in the old testament the type is priest of priesthood of melchizedek new testament is the eternal priesthood of christ chapter 7 in hebrews the old testament type here over here we can see is old covenant and its promises uh, the fulfillment in the new testament is the new covenant with better promises uh, in hebrews chapter 8 then we have the old testament type that is system of sacrifices and in the new testament we have the fulfillment as a redemption in christ sacrifice which is uh, a big portion and we can see it in chapter uh, 9 now we have already looked into how uh, the book, old testament forms a foundation for the book of hebrews okay now let's move to the second part of the bible that is the new testament okay so we will begin with the gospels then we'll get into the book of acts then we'll look at the epistles and the book of revelations also revelation also so let's look into look, look into it uh, so let's compare or let's see how uh, the he book of hebrews is connected with the gospels so the gospels of the hebrews present jesus in a perfect harmonious manner jesus as an inter Jesus okay so luke chapter 22 verse 32 says jesus prays for peter john 17 says he intercedes for his followers luke 12 verse 8 says he promises to acknowledge his witnesses before angels of god all of this is so beautifully explained in the book of hebrews it presents christ as our great high priest who sympathizes with us and gives us grace for every situation so you will see how the author is bringing out the aspect of high priest okay high priest the role of high priest is to be a mediator between god and man okay so he stands between god and man and how jesus christ is a great high priest who stands in the gap for us and who sympathizes with us and gives us the grace in every situation so that we can cope up with it and we can get through it it presents him as the son of god just as jesus claimed to be in many scriptures so jesus himself claimed in many scripture portions especially in john as we can see that he is the son of god or the son of man so the same thing uh, the book of hebrews is also trying to portray or emphasize on he uh, it reaffirms christ's statements that he will be judged 
by how we obey or reject his teachings. Matthew 7, verse 24 to 27, and John 12, verse 48. So we can see that Jesus also says that if you do not obey him, if you do not listen to his words, if you do not you know, heed to his words, what will happen to us, how we will be judged. Okay, so the same thing, uh, the author of Hebrew also tries to emphasize that if we do not uh, listen or obey his words, what will our uh, fate be? What will our end be? It is based on the truth presented in the Gospels and Acts. Jesus gave his life voluntarily as a sacrifice for sin and belief in him is the basis of salvation. So we can see over here, even the book of Hebrews that is in line with the Gospels, where the Gospels and the book of Acts tells us that Jesus chose, okay, Jesus chose, basically, he voluntarily, he volunteered to sacrifice his life. Okay, God asked, who will go? Jesus said, I will go. So he chose, he volunteered to come down to the earth, become a humble human being, uh, live a simple and humble life, go through all the temptations, go through all the pains and sufferings of life, go through all the poverty of life, go through all the, you know, uh, uh, all the highs and lows of life. And then also without sinning, he was sacrificed as a sin offering on the cross. And, uh, and, he, uh, and we can see that this is the belief that if we believe in him, that he took upon himself our sins. If we believe, if we believe in him, that he died for my sins, okay, then that belief forms the basis for our salvation. Uh, this, is a, this is a reference that we can note over here is Mark 14, verse 22 to 28, John 1, verse 29, and uh, verses 3 to 16. Hebrews shows the relationship between the message of the Gospels and the Old Testament. The author uses Old Testament scriptures to show the finality of the gospel in contrast to all that went before it. Okay, so it basically tries to show how it was completed, how the Old Testament scriptures were completed in the New Testament. So Christ is the perfect revelation of God. All have perfect access to go to through to go to God through Jesus Christ, who claimed, I am the truth, the way, and the life. No one comes to the Father except to me, John 14, verse 6. So Jesus is the perfect revelation of God. Why did basically Jesus come on earth? Okay, this is a big question that we can ask. Why did Jesus come on earth? Okay, so if he just had to, you know, sacrifice his life or if he just had to die on the cross as a lamb. Okay, if the sacrifice was the main thing. Jesus could have just come down as a human, as, you know, as a fully grown up human being and then just butchered or then just sacrificed on the cross. But no, he did not do that. He came, he was born as a small baby. He lived 30 years, 33 years, and then he was sacrificed. So why did he have to live all those years and struggle and suffer in this world? But also not as a king, as a poor, as a poor boy, as a poor man, okay, as a man who, who as a carpenter's son, Okay, as also coming from Nazareth, who had no value. Okay, why did he have to go through that? Why did he have to go through fastings? Why did he have to go through religious, um, you know, religious training? Why did he have to go through all those temptations? Okay, what he was trying to do, and in through all that, what kind of life did he live? He lived a sinless life. Okay, so what kind of attitude did he show? What kind of character did he show? What kind of nature did he show? So all that was very important. So we have to understand simple things that he did not only come on the earth to just sacrifice himself. Yes, that was uh, the agenda where uh, he had to set us free. Okay, But the main purpose, the main purpose of him coming to this world, coming to this earth was he wanted to reveal who God is because people had forgotten how God is. People did not know how God is. Because the laws and the rituals and everything that was coming in, uh, people had uh, no idea, no clue of how basically God is. So Jesus came down to the earth to reveal the character of God, to reveal the nature of God, to reveal how God is, Okay, to reveal how God wants his people to be, to reveal how God you know, is for his people. So all that God, Jesus wanted to portray, all that God, uh, Jesus wanted to reveal. So Christ is the perfect revelation of God. That is the main thing. He came to reveal God to us. He, want, he came to reveal 
God to his people. All have perfect access because of Jesus. Now, because he's the way, the truth and the life, we all have access. And he, we know that he told the curtain, the, the curtain was torn. When he died on the cross, he opened the way. He opened the way. People were not able to come to God because of so many rituals and everything that was ahead of them. So now, with the death of Jesus Christ, now he showed who he was. And through Jesus Christ, now we can you know, go directly to the Father. Without, we do not need any ritual or any priest in between. We can go directly to the Father. So no one comes to the Father except through Jesus Christ. Okay, that's what we can see in our reference. So if we want to approach God, we need to approach Jesus Christ and we need to go through him. This is the heart of the gospel, which is further developed in the epistle of Hebrews. Now let's look into uh, the study of Hebrews in comparison with Acts. Okay, how Acts is found or how uh, the book of Hebrew relates to Acts. Hebrews is built on the book of Acts too, as it explains the same message that the early church proclaimed. Because we can understand Acts talks about the young church, the budding church, the new churches at that time. And Hebrews is also uh, during that period. So all the messages of the Acts is Christ-centered as it is in Hebrews also. The apostles point to Old Testament to show the fulfillment of promises and prophecies in Jesus Christ. We, in Acts, we see Jesus and his teachings exalted. So do we see in Hebrews. In every page of Acts, we see the work of the sovereign Lord recorded and through the events and life of the disciples. Hebrews 2 emphasizes on the sovereign Lord. So in the book of Acts, we can see the work of God. We can see how, uh, you know, God worked, the sovereign Lord worked through uh, all these things, through all these events and the lives and, of the disciples. And in the same way, we can see Hebrew also emphasizes on the sovereign Lord. Next, we'll talk about Hebrews and the epistles. Hebrews and all the epistles are in complete harmony in the presentation of Christ. In the epistles, we have the theological explanation and practical application for the truths found in the Old Testament the Gospels and the Acts. Okay, so what are the epistles? What do the epistles contain? Epistles basically contain the theological ex explanations, the doctrines and the practical applications of the truth that were found in the Gospel, that Jesus taught in the Gospels, which had the foundation in the Old Testament. Okay, so we have to understand what do the epistles contain. Like every other epistle, even the Hebrew contains the same thing, theological explanation and the practical application of the truth found in the teachings of Jesus Christ, which is, the, which is uh, founded on the Old Testament. Each emphasis, each emphasize on different aspects of Christian doctrine. Okay, each epistle emphasizes on different aspects of Christian doctrine and all together we have our doctrines, but through them, we uh, through them all run the same theme, which is the dominant, uh, which is dominant in the book of Hebrews as well. What is the dominant theme in the epistles? That Jesus Christ is the Savior and the Lord. Okay, Jesus Christ is the Savior and the Lord and put your confidence in him. Because Jesus Christ is the Savior and the Lord, put your confidence in him. Next, we'll talk about Hebrews and the book of Revelation. Hebrews talks about the glory, honor, power of the Son of God. Revelation is the consummation of all types of prophecies, promises, in both Old Covenant and the New. It unveils Jesus Christ or it reveals Jesus Christ. So let's look at the structural unity of the biblical Christology. Okay, so let's, in chapter 13, verse 8, how is Jesus Christ seen? Okay, so we can see that in, in, the, in the basic, in the basis and the last part, as we can see, in the foundational level. This is the foundational level on which everything is built, right? The foundation is at the bottom. So let's see, in the foundation level, Old Testament, there is a prediction of Jesus Christ in the Old Testament. Okay, there is a prediction about Jesus Christ in the Old Testament. The second level that we have, the Gospels, it is the fulfillment of Jesus Christ in the Gospels. Okay, there is a fulfillment of Jesus Christ in the Gospels. Then in the third level that we have, we have the proclamation of Jesus Christ in the Acts. Proclamation of Jesus Christ in Acts. Then we have explanation about Jesus Christ in the epistles. Okay, explanation 
in the epistles and the lastly that we can see we have a culmination of jesus christ in the revelation culmination in revelation so this is how we can see there is a structural unity in the book of hebrews okay there is structural unity of biblical christology in the book uh, in the whole bible as well as in the book of hebrews okay next we are going to talk about the content what does the book contain what is what does the book talk about actually the central theme of the epistle is supremacy of jesus christ okay supremacy of christ this is the central theme of the epistle of hebrews supremacy of christ okay supremacy of christ is the main theme or the central theme of the epistle the author uses a series of contrasts okay so how does the author talk about this topic he uses a series of contrasts to develop and emphasize the theme okay so he uses contrasts usually comparisons uh, between different kind of thing between jesus and other things and he emphasizes on the theme then we see christ as above the prophets above the angels and above all the old testament leaders like moses and joshua okay so there is a comparison between jesus and the prophets comparison between jesus and angels comparison between the old testament leaders and jesus jesus is the final revelation of god chapter 1 verse 2 he is the mediator of a new and better covenant chapter 8 verse 6 he is the author and the perfecter of our faith chapter 12 verse 2 and jesus christ is the same yesterday today and forever chapter 13 verse 8 all of these theological statements aimed at a practical purpose okay all of these themes that we have just spoken about all of these theological statements that we just spoke about all of them aim at a practical purpose they all have a practical purpose the author raises a strong plea to the readers because he has taught them so many things so he is simply saying he repeats this every time he says therefore fix your thoughts on jesus christ fix your thoughts on jesus this is mentioned in chapter 3 verse 4 let's look at the division and the subdivision of the book hebrews can be mainly divided into two major divisions first part is chapters 1 to 10 which contain the doctrinal aspects that is where he is teaching about the supremacy of christ okay so from chapters 1 to 10 there is doctrinal study there is a theory as you can see doctrinal studies where he is teaching so it talks about the supremacy of christ this in chapters 11 to 13 we have the practical aspect the practical or pragmatic uh, study over here and that is supremacy of the new and living life this is how we should live how we should live a better life the supremacy of the new and living life let's look at basic outline of the book of hebrews so the first thing that we can see in the book is supremacy of christ okay supremacy of christ so the first thing that we can see over here in the supremacy of christ is supremacy of his person the supremacy of the person of jesus christ and here we have jesus as uh, supremacy uh, jesus as supreme uh, as a son of god jesus is superior to moses and jesus is superior to joshua okay there's a comparison with moses and joshua then we can see there is supremacy in his priesthood so the christ christ is our high priest he is the the spiritual progress is the progress that we can see there is a permanent he jesus is a permanent and perfect high priest he he, he is a minister of a new covenant he is a minister of a new covenant he is superior okay jesus is sacrifice is superior than any other sacrifice the second main part that we have over here is the supremacy of the new and living way supremacy of the new and living way superior he has a superior way if we follow him then there is a superior way of living there is a superior discipline that we can follow and there is a superior life that we can live so this is a simple outline that we can see an analytical outline of the book of hebrews there are some key verses and key words that we need to keep in mind uh, while studying the book of hebrews so there are some key verses like chapter 1 verses 1 to 2 chapter 3 verse 1 chapter 14 4 verse 14 chapter 8 verse 1 chapter 13 verse 8 so these are uh, some five some of the five are uh, very important key verses that we need to learn memorize 
if possible it's very good and but these are the very important verses from the book of hebrews so there are few words that we need to notice or note in the book of hebrews okay so in the subject matter that we can see in the theoretical part we can see angel better blood covenant eternal faith god heaven heavenly offering partakers perfect priest purification sacrifice salvation son spoken superior unbelief okay these are some of the words that are important in the theoretical part and then we have in relational aspects uh, it is written where there are comparisons where there are derivations we can see uh, that we have to uh, focus or emphasize where these words are and then understand how the author is connecting the previous and the uh, sta previous statements and the future statements so we can uh, take in mind wherever there are buts for if if so therefore so if these words are found then you can understand there is something before and there is something relevant afterwards okay now let's come to the special characteristics of this book hebrews is a book of contrasts warnings and exhortations so the whole book if you can understand the whole book uh, you will find either contrasts warnings or exhortations and through these only the author has mainly tried to uh, bring out the theme of the book so the people to whom he is originally writing uh, were in danger of leaving christ or uh, or sliding back or you know uh, going back to their own uh, religion uh, of judaism so the writer contrasts what judaism offered with what the believers have in christ in christ everything is better so what the author is trying to do he is comparing the old things the, the things of judaism what judaism had to offer to them and what christ has to offer to them okay so he is comparing them the old life and the new the old covenant and the new and he says that in christ everything has become better he also warns them of the danger and exhorts them to be faithful he warns them of the danger of going back to their old life or being derailed and then he also exhorts them to be faithful encourages them to be faithful the contrasts show us and juice how christ is the messiah and the fulfillment of their law and prophecies okay so he is trying to bring contrast to basically show one thing that how jesus is the messiah how he is the best revelation how he is a fulfillment of everything that they were following in the old testament or the judaism so when they had the fulfillment why they have to go back to the old procedures once again so the warnings and the exhortations are extremely important for every christian there are seven passages of warning of danger for every danger god provides a defense okay so that's what he had the author has done and for this there are 12 exhortation or let us okay let us verses in the book of hebrews chapter 4 verse 11 verse 14 chapter verse 16 then chapter 6 verse 1 chapter 10 verse 22 23 and 24 then chapter 12 verse 12 verse 1 2 and 28 then chapter 13 verses 13 to 15 okay so this is uh, this was the basic thing that we were studying today just an introductory aspect just an introduction to the book of hebrew so we just had a study of the background and we had kind of an analytical analytical study of uh, how we saw, uh, how we can connect the book of hebrews with the whole bible and we had the theme we studied about the theme basically and we uh, saw a little bit about the theme and all those things what is found in the book of hebrews so that you can get an overview of what we can uh, get from this book of hebrews so uh, i request you all to view the lecture and take down notes and i do the needful okay thank you god bless you we'll meet in the next class in the next lecture where we'll get to know about the authorship the time date and basic theme of the book of hebrews okay thank you and god bless you